Hey Gems, welcome to Wheelchair Wednesday. This is where I talk to you guys about my life in a wheelchair and the good, the bad, the ugly, the TMI, all that stuff. So today is all about pain management and I have some tips and tricks and some advice for you guys if you are in a wheelchair or have a spinal cord injury. Some of these might help you out. I know they definitely helped me out, so let's begin. Number one is try to take your medication, if you take medication, at the same time every day. Now for me personally, I take medication three times a day, morning, evening, and bedtime. And I have learned over my eight years of being in a wheelchair that training your mind and your body when to expect your medication is so helpful. It's something that I didn't know in the very beginning and then once I started doing it, it helped out so much because it basically trained my mind and my body when to expect medication and when to take them and also it really does help, especially in the evening when I take them at a certain time that I know that they're going to last me because that's when I take my actual pain medication is in the morning and the evening. So when I take that evening dose, I need to make sure that it's at a time where I know it's going to last me until the next morning when I take my next dose. Number two is when you are in pain, try to distract yourself instead of just taking more pain medication. Now personally, I am on a very strict medication schedule. I get just enough medication to last me through until the next month. So if I'm in a lot of pain one day and I take an extra pain med, it's gonna shorten me at the end of the month. So I do not do that. I try to distract myself with doing other things and I don't know if you guys know this, but doing this, filming, is actually one of the things I love to do when I'm in pain because it gets my mind off of it. So find something that can distract your mind, whether it's coloring, watching a movie, listening to music, reading a book, talking to your friends. Find something to distract your mind to just get your mind off of the pain because if you just solely focus on that, it's gonna make it worse and you're just, it's not a good situation. Trust me, I've been in there many, many times and you don't wanna do that to yourself. Number three is a big one is know your limits. Now, personally, I have a spinal cord injury that allows me to still move around throughout the day in my chair and be able to bend, be able to use certain muscles. So when I have a good pain day, I like to do extra things, whether it's housework, getting out of the house, you know, giving the dogs a bath, something that I know that on a bad pain day I wouldn't be able to do. But the problem is, is that you need to still know your limits on your good pain days because that next day could be hell. And I've had many of those times and luckily I have a great support system that lives in this house with me. My fiance of over 10 years and my best friend, they both live in our house and or my, we all live together and they will tell me, you know, Em, you need to stop for the day because you're gonna be killing yourself and kicking yourself in the head, figuratively, that you did it, all of this stuff yesterday, but you're gonna be in a lot of pain tomorrow. So know your limits. Number four is also a really big one and something that I am so thankful that I am allowed to do is find some place other than your wheelchair that is comfortable to you, whether it's your bed, a couch, a chair, a recliner, something that gets you out of that sitting position in the same position all the time. Luckily, I am able to get up onto the couch and we do have a sofa that reclines downstairs and my bed is amazing. So on really, really bad pain days, sometimes I will stay in bed all day. I mean, I'll get up to you know drain my catheter, go get something to eat, get something to drink, and still use my muscles and make sure that my circulation is okay, but I will go back to bed and spend all day there because the pain is just too much. <laughs> Number five is it's okay to have a bad day. We're all human. Just because you're in a wheelchair or you have a spinal cord injury, you don't need to be rainbows and sunshine all the time. You're allowed to have a bad day and you will have a bad day. Uh, a friend of mine that actually recently acquired a spinal cord injury, I talked a lot to him and his family 
when it happened and while he was still in the hospital. And I told his parents, he's going to have bad days. And I told him, you're going to have bad days. You're going to have days where you are so pissed off at the world that you're not able to do something that you didn't even think about before your injury. It's going to piss you off. And it's okay because we're all human. The thing on those days that you need to focus on are how far you've come. Even if it's a very minor thing, focus on the positive and don't let that negativity get to you completely. It's okay to have a bad day, but definitely make sure that you're surrounding yourself with good people or just good vibes on those days. Number six is definitely have a very open and honest conversation with your doctor about your pain. I've had to do this many times throughout my life with an injury and basically if I've been on a medication for a certain amount of time, say six months to a year, and I don't feel that it's doing what the doctor told me it was gonna do, I will talk to him about it and tell him, listen, this isn't working, can we try something else? Their doctors are there for you and they're the people that are there to help make your life as comfortable as possible. If you have a fantastic doctor like I do, I'm very, very grateful for mine and he works so hard to make sure that I have the best quality of life that I can and allows me to live the life that I want because he has my back when it comes to medication and pain and what to do when it gets too bad. Now, number seven is not something that everybody's gonna have, but I definitely recommend it if you are able to do it, is if you have a bathtub or a shower that you can get into, use it. Cleanliness is definitely, obviously, very, very important, especially when you have a spinal cord injury or any type of, you know, disease or illness that um, affects your immune system. I personally have something like that because my immune system is shot because I had a MRSA infection in my spinal cord, it definitely weakened my immune system a great amount. Now, I was very fortunate to be able to have a walk-in tub built into our house when we built it, um, but I know not everybody is gonna be able to afford one or have access to one. What I would say for that is definitely check out your local recreational centers. If they have hot tubs that you can get in and out of, if they have a pool, definitely make sure you check with your doctor about the hot tub and the pool first. Um, because if you have a catheter or anything like that, you want to make sure that you're being sanitary and you're being um, careful with your equipment. But I would definitely suggest that water is so amazing for a spinal cord injury. I am so lucky that I get to have a bathtub and a shower that I can easily get in and out of because on days where you just feel like shit, a shower or a bath cures everything in my opinion. Number eight is something that I am so grateful that I have and I wouldn't trade for the world is if you are able to get yourself a pet. I have two dogs and they are not service dogs but they are my therapy dogs for my mental health and my emotional health and also my physical health. I feel like if you have a pet they understand more than you will ever give them credit for <laughs> because they can sense things that you can't. Um, both of my dogs are absolutely incredible. We have a Sheltie Jack Russell Terrier who is named Watson and an American Eskimo named Tabby. Um, unfortunately right now Tabby is going through a really rough time. If you guys saw my Q&A video that I posted a little while ago, you'll understand what's going on. Uh, basically we just found out Tabby has cancer so we are in the middle of trying to figure out treatments and surgeries and all that stuff but I would not trade either of my dogs for anything in the world they have helped me so so much more than I could ever repay them um, and it's amazing what they will do for your life I mean just every aspect of your life uh, if you're a cat person, go ahead, get a cat. If you can't have a cat or a dog, like if you live in an apartment, get yourself a hamster, a bird, a goldfish, something. Something that also works as a positive distraction 
for your pain, which is exactly what my dogs do. And they're both laying on the couch right over there sleeping away. Number nine is something I have done since the day I went into the hospital eight years ago is music, movies, friends, talking on the phone, everything like that helps so much. Also having Kyle nearby me, something about his presence definitely helps with my pain. When he hugs me, I physically feel better. And music, movies, books, anything, again, is positive distractions in your life. Having your friends around, going out to dinner, something that gets your mind in a positive light and a positive. It's one of the biggest things that I can express is just surround yourself with positivity. Now, number 10 is also something if you are going out, make sure you take your medication with you. I have been a uh, abuser of this number or of this fact because I have forgotten to take my medication with me at certain times after I leave the house because I'm thinking, oh, it's two o'clock and I don't take my meds till five or six. I'll be home in plenty of time. Then something happens and now it's seven, eight o'clock, I'm still not home and I am in excruciating pain because I forgot to bring my medication with me. So anytime you leave the house, make sure you have your medication with you just to be on the safe side. You may not need it, but if you do, you're gonna be very, very happy that you have it because being in pain fucking sucks. Let's admit it, nobody wants to be in pain. And when you have a spinal cord injury, if you have an incomplete injury and you can feel the pain like I can, it sucks. So you definitely want to make sure that you don't leave your house without your meds. Number 11 is another one for your doctor. If you are taking a medication and the side effects are too bad, or if the medication has not been working for three to six months, talk to your doctor. Get it out of your system. If it's not working for you, there is no reason why you should continue taking it. But also make sure to talk to your doctor because certain medications do take a while to start working in your system. So make sure when you start a new medication, you talk to your doctor about the side effects and how long it's going to take until you see the effects that it's supposed to give you kick in. Number 12 is another one that I have unfortunately done, but I haven't done it in a long time, is do not take the pain out on those around you. I've been a culprit, whatever you want to call it, of this fact is that on bad pain days, I've taken it out on Kyle, I've taken it out on Tyler, I've taken it out on my mom, um, and you know what? Don't take it out on people around you, especially those that love you and care about you. If you're having a bad pain day and you're on edge and you're just in a pissy mood, just tell them. Just be open and honest with them. I'm afraid that because I'm in a lot of pain that I'm gonna say something that I'm gonna regret and you don't wanna do that. Those people are there because they care about you and they love you and you don't want to portray that negativity or push that negativity on them because it's not their fault. Unfortunately, it's no one's fault. It's just the matter of the beast, it's the belly of the beast, and it's the hands that we've been dealt, the cards we've been dealt, and yes, it sucks, but make sure that you don't take it out on the people that you care about. Um, also, I would suggest if you do have really bad pain days and you are just pissed off at the world and you need to tell somebody, definitely you know, go to a friend or family member and just be like, listen, I need to vent. And if you don't have anybody around you that you can vent to, get yourself a journal and write it all out. I have been keeping journals since way before my injury and there have been plenty of days where I've just been having a shitty ass day and I don't wanna project that negativity onto anybody even just by venting. So I'll go ahead and I'll just put my headphones on, listen to some music and write it all in my journal and that way it gets out of my head, it's somewhere that I can just close and just be done with. Number 13 is something that I learned while I was in the hospital is make sure that you do pressure releases, exercises, and stretches. Now, when your body is in a seated position or any position for a pro prolonged period of time, then you can start to atrophy and your muscles can start to atrophy, which basically means that they are going to settle in one place and then not do anything. 
So it's very, very important to do very simple stretches and very small exercises. If you can, if you need somebody's help, definitely ask them. Don't do it by yourself if you're worried that you could possibly fall out of your chair or injure yourself. But there are a couple of exercises that I like to do and stretches that I like to do um, that definitely help me feel a little bit more comfortable and also help my body stay as flexible as it can and to get my muscles working as much as I can from a wheelchair. So if you guys wanna see a video of certain stretches or exercises or little things that I do to um, help my body while I'm still sitting in my chair, let me know, give this video a thumbs up or let me know in the comments and I'll definitely do that for you guys. Number 14 is spasms are normal but suck. Um, spasms are definitely gonna be a part of your life if you have a spinal cord injury. It is basically when your muscles kind of start contracting and shake and they are normal. Definitely talk to your doctor and your physical and occupational therapists about this. Also, while you're in the hospital, when you suffered your spinal cord injury, they will talk to you about that and show you different ways to get rid of them. Um, I have spasms and I take an anti-spasm medication every single day, a few times a day to keep my spasms at bay. Mostly they are in my legs and my uh, stomach and I also have full body spasms. Most of the time they are when I'm laying down and basically my entire body goes rigid and it's very difficult to breathe. Um, and they only last for a few seconds, but it's basically your spinal cord and your brain are telling your muscles that, you know, wake up basically. Um, and it can be really scary at first but once you kind of get used to them and you kind of get the feeling and you know the signs of like when you're gonna get a spasm, you can kind of gauge how to react to it a little bit better. Also, if you guys want a video all about spasms and different types of spasms and what to do, again, give this video a thumbs up. I'm always looking for Wheelchair Wednesday ideas. The last one for the pain management video is find yourself a good wheelchair. Now, when I first acquired my spinal cord injury, I basically had a little wheelchair that I was given at the hospital and it had basically zero support. The type of wheelchair it was is called a sling chair. So basically it is like your butt is in a sling and your back is kind of in a sling. It was very cheaply made, it was very basic, and I have definitely upgraded in the years that I've had a spinal cord injury to a better fitting chair, number one, and a more comfortable chair. Now, I have two wheelchairs. I have a manual wheelchair and a power wheelchair. The power wheelchair is what I use when I'm in the house, and the manual wheelchair uh, right now is what I use when I go out into the community. Both chairs are actually extremely similar. I have the same back, which was basically molded or fitted to my back for the arch. And the pad that I use is a gel pad and I have the same gel pad on this chair as I do my manual chair. So definitely talk to wheelchair seating or whatever service that you use for your wheelchair services. Definitely make sure that you talk to them, you tell them your needs, your wants, um, make sure that you're fitted correctly and also just make sure that you keep the maintenance on your chairs up to date. That's another big one right there is just make sure that your chairs are always in good working order because that's what we used to get around and if we don't have our chairs, it's like somebody cutting off an able-bodied person's legs and telling them, okay, well, still, you gotta get around. So there you go. So guys, that is the end of this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any suggestions um, for Wheelchair Wednesday videos, please leave them in the comments. Also, if you have any questions about my life in a wheelchair or advice or anything that I can help you out with, again, you can leave it in the comments. You can tweet me. You can write me a private message on the NSJ's Facebook page. Any way you need to get a hold of me, all the links are down below.
Corny Face. <laughs>